Yeah, we'll just jump into it here. Um, you know, I, I thought overall it was a good weekend for us. We got players that can come in and compete to, to play right away. Guys are going to start, guys that are, you know, guys just going to add good depth. You know, no one's promised anything. They just have to come in and earn it. So with that, we'll take questions. In the video that the Panthers issued, I think you, Zavala said he sent you a text. He did. He just sent a text yesterday just checking in to see how things were going. Um, yeah, he, he and Icky are really close. He's a guy that really wanted to be here. We had a really good visit with us. Uh, we went back, it's funny, two, like two years ago watching tape where he lines up right next to Icky, and they were just road grading people. And they're good friends. He's physical. He's smart. He, he's tough. He's everything that we want in the offensive line. Uh, the scouts liked him. You know, Coach Campin, Coach Kugler, they had strong conviction on him. He's a guy that everybody wanted here. We just had to figure out the value. And then when we took him, you know, guys from across the league were like, wow, like, that's a great pick. You could tell he was – everyone was trying to keep him under the radar, but he was a guy people knew about. Had you not moved up, would he have been in consideration at 93? Uh, I'm trying to remember if he was on the board. He, like, you could, you could argue that. I don't remember if he was, yeah. though, at the time. But, yeah, I mean, for the role, prob probably would have been there. And, and I think, Frank, you reiterated uh, playing next to Icky again. What does that mean at left guard, and what does that mean for Brady Christensen? Yeah, I mean, you know, we go in and compete. Listen, Brady's earned the right – you know, one of our strengths is O-line. Everybody knows that. So the group that was here last year has, has done a great job, and Camp and Kugler have done a great job with those guys. So, um, listen, every, it's no secret. Everybody knows you, you need depth at O-line, and you need competition. Obviously, and with Corbett's injury – and him going to be missing time at the beginning of the year, um, you know, was something Scott and I talked about. We, we need to find somebody to come in there and compete and find the right mix in the interior. So that will play itself out, you know, over the, the next few months and in training camp. What is the timeline for both Austin and Brady? Um, yeah, you know, Brady's – you know, I don't want to go into exact timeline. I, you know, Brady should be good. Um, you know, obviously Austin's going to be into the season a little bit more, so um, we'll, we'll take that. We'll address that as we get closer with that. You, but not for words in your mouth, it sounds like he will miss some time, regular season time. Yes, that's what. It, yes, he will miss some regular season time. Guys, in a, a bigger picture sort of thing. I mean, you look now this whole off season, and you were at you know, Bryce Young, Jonathan Mingo, Thielen, um, Chark. Bird first. I mean, that's, that's a lot to add to the passing game. How important was it to you to upgrade this passing game that was 29th in the league last season? I mean, yeah, that's that was a real emphasis going into the soft season. You know, you want to give a young quarterback or Andy Dalton or Matt Corral plenty of weapons so they can go out there and operate. And uh, you know, like I said, we started on defense. We built the offensive line. Um, this year, we reinforced. We want to keep that a strength, so reinforce that with Savala. But having weapons, you know, to keep it open for the running back, for the uh, quarterback, that's really important to us. Right. Yeah, I just echo what Scott said. We we're all talking about Bryce and the kind of point guard, distribute the ball type mentality. Listen, in our in the history of what we've done schematically. Um, you can ask all the skill guys that we've been around. We distribute the ball around. We, we, we spread it out. We spread it around. You know, we want to use multiple formations, personnel groups. Um, you can never have enough playmakers. That's a big deal. Um, what I'm super excited about our skill room. Um, really, really excited about our skill room. And we added to that what we did in free agency is a big deal. And, of course, we got the quarterback we wanted to get the ball and distribute it around, you know, in a way that we think is going to be unique. We think he can he can become a unique player in this league, so excited about that. Do you envision uh, Jamie playing more nickel or safety uh, when you guys get him in? Yeah, I mean, he first of all, he's just a, a tough competitor. You know, um, a little bit more in the chin thing, you know, a heavy hitter in the box a little bit. But um, listen, I don't, want to, I don't want to put him into a box just yet. We want to get to know him even more once he gets here. Um, he's the kind of guy, high character, tough, edgy, you know, has an edge to him, um, you know, great special teams value, um, you know, so find a role. You know, we, we talk a lot about finding roles for players, then be a star in your role. So um, I think this is the kind of guy who's going to come in and compete and he's going to create a role for himself at some level. Scott, is there any 
Anything that you guys didn't get in this draft or maybe even going back to free agency that you could look at over the summer? I think well, when we mapped it out, we pretty much checked the boxes of what, as we go into this, what are the remaining needs? Now, you're trying to balance value and where guys are on the board, but I think we checked most of the boxes. You know, one thing, we went through an exercise yesterday, and we're in Frank's office, and he's putting down names and kind of our target names, and we're able to get those names that we wanted. So, you know, we feel really good about where we're at you know, heading into the season. And the roster's never set, and we'll, you know, th we'll go throughout the spring, but th after the draft, we like this where we're at. How's having all this extra time now to get a jump on the underdrafted guys to start doing your work on those help? Does that help at all? or It helps with the organization of it. You know, we'll get, we're, we're going to pull the coaches in the room. The scouts will be in there. We know the numbers that we need to add at each spot, you know, spot to fill out our 90-man roster. We're probably not going to fill out all the way to 90. If there's not a, a player that we think is a quality guy for 90, we'll hold off. There's other opportunities. But for the most part, we want to. We think there's a lot of depth still on our draft board in that sixth, seventh round and into free agency, and guys always fall through. There's, Like I said yesterday, there's a lot of guys in free agency that make teams. So it's, this is a really important time for us. Okay. How, if at all, would uh, Burns' injury impact your contract talks with him? I don't. I don't see that we'll get into it um burns is going to be here you know we're, he's a one of our leaders and we'll work through it with his agent how do you guys feel about swing tackle right now like who is the guy who would compete for that position at this point well we have we have options so like we can go out there's a veterans on the street um we'll get into free agency here we still have a couple linemen on our board and we'll see how that goes but, you know the, the thing is there's always a 53-man cut. There's other opportunities. There's players in the XFL. We'll, we'll look at every opportunity. Uh, to follow up on what you said about Burns, when are, you, are you hoping to get that done like, before you get into the season? There's no timeline. We'll just start talks. I'll reach out to his agent, and uh, we'll have those talks at some point. It's kind of a similar topic. Um, do you, have you made a decision yet on Brown and CJ's fifth year? Uh, I think we're going to talk about that. We should know here. You'll probably hear probably Monday morning is my guess. Well, <laughs> well I, I, not it we, today. yeah, I want to talk to the players first. You know, I think it's important for for it to be communicated with them first before I say anything. Is there any thought process to maybe getting back into the draft so that way you're not negotiating for players that you like at six and seven round grades? Honestly, I don't want to give up any more picks right now. If there's someone that's just standing there, we'll talk about it. But I think we're set to get into free agency at this point. I do want to keep you guys here later, though, so maybe. Yeah, I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Frank, you talked about how good you felt about this team, and then you go through, like Scott said, you go through checking names off. I mean, just what do you feel about this team now after the draft and you know, where, where things are looking? Feel good in all three, you know, really in all three phases. Um, it was really important to, you know, to continue to build the foundation, get get O line depth, which we addressed, um, you know, both in free agency and in the draft. Get the skilled players. We've already talked about that. You know, defensively too, we we did the same thing. You know, both adding in free agency and in the draft, um, and being very selective and about the kind of players that we're looking for. So, as Scott mentioned. Um, you know the roster's always continuing to be built, right? It's it's never done, so that work is never done. But um, where we are in the process right now, feel really good. It was especially good to see the guys out on the field last week. Uh, you know, as that first brush. So then we get the rookie mini camp coming up. Get a look at these guys. You know, on the field. Um, and so, yeah. I mean, it, it's every day. Every day kind of fills in the pieces in your mind of what we're looking for. Night, you guys drafted DJ. Between him, Etour, Marquise, Barno, the other guys that are here, are you confident there's a starter opposite Brian among that group? Yes. Um, yes, we are. And we will uh, – very confident in that. You know, think it'll be competitive, right? I mean, that, that's what we want to do. We want to create competition at every spot. Nothing's a given. When you're a new staff, <clears throat> you know, that that's a luxury that you're afforded even more than normal. Everybody knows – that we're all on notice, right? Everybody knows that this is a fresh start for everybody. So I think you you play off that excitement, you open it up to compete for that spot, and that's what we'll do. Frank, you were kind of a part of that in 95 as a player when they were building a roster from scratch. 
Anything you as a player just watching learn from that experience that you can compare to what you're going through right now? Yeah, really, I, I think it's what I just said. It's the idea of a fresh start. And I think players know, players are so smart, they understand that you get a new coaching staff in, there's been turnover. This is kind of like a new lease on life for everybody. Um, and w we're just going to make it competitive at every position. And um, it's the NFL. That's the way it has to be done. And how much has Bryce been in contact with you since he left the building yesterday at night? Just a little bit, you know. I just touched base with him today, just a little bit. Um, but yeah, continue to be excited about that, and we'll we'll get him ramped up here quickly. That edge position, there are a couple of veterans uh, available outside. Is that something y'all would consider? Yeah, I think we always explore the market out there. It, it's got to make sense for us. It's got to make sense for them. So, you know, uh, whoever it may be, we'll we'll just always monitor. Who had the best uh, reaction to a pick this weekend of your scouts and assistant coaches? <laughs> Probably camping. <laughs> He's, yeah. I'd love to play poker with him. He can't hide his emotion. I think he, he, was, re he was really excited today, you know, to get Zavala. He loves his guys. He loves that group. Takes a lot of pride in them. You know, the personalities, how they mesh in there. And he, to add someone like Zavala, he was really excited. You guys took a couple guys that um, and, and a, a, kind of a COVID effect who were in college six years, I think. Did you see a lot of that this year as you, you know, on your board that, you know, guys that you normally might not take because yeah. of the age, but but yeah. he almost had to. Th there's guys on the board that were older than some of the guys on our team right now. Yeah. And so that's it's unique. Um, and there's two ways to look at it. I mean, their bodies have had a chance to mature. It's, you know, maybe they had more reps in college because they get that extra year. Uh, I think it's just kind of one of those unique um, years that way. I see it correcting over the next couple of years. So. But yeah, we, it was wild. You're like, this guy's 24, this guy's 25. We ran into that a few times. Scott and Brad, I run, Go ahead. Up, so with, with Corral, um, I mean, obviously you had some injuries at that position in the preseason last year. Does that, uh, what do you say to him and kind of where do you stand on that going Yeah, on it's now? a fresh start for him. Like, like Coach said, he, you know, he's got a new opportunity with the new staff. Uh, you know, they haven't seen him before. He came in bigger and heavier. Um, nothing's promised to anyone, you know. You know, we talked about Andy yesterday is the starter right now, but all he can do is control what he can control. Just go out there and compete. Just make the plays, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Right. When Ron was here and they drafted Cam, I remember him talking about that he would be forever kind of linked uh, to Cam, and his their success would sort of be commingled. Is that sort of how you think this – is that just the reality of, of what the situation will be with you and Bryce? I do think it's the reality. Um, you know, I think we tend to think uh, this is a collaborative thing. You understand head coach quarterback is a unique connection. The fact that I played the position um, offensive guy. So, uh, yeah, I, I embrace that. That's kind of fun. In fact, I mentioned that to Bryce yesterday. Um, you know, that our relationship as head coach and quarterback has to be strong. Now, I feel that way with all the players, but there is a unique, and then plus play caller quarterback. That's another element of it. So, want to develop that relationship and uh, to be as strong as it can. And certainly, uh, you know, the, the success or whatever happens, you know, in the coming years, um, you know, we're all linked together on that, right? Scott and I at the, at the front of that as, as GM and head coach, but obviously quarterback being a big part of that. Um, it's a big deal. Embrace that challenge and look forward to that. Excited about that. Scott, did you get any interesting reactions from any of your peers after the Bryce pick became official? I think everybody knew at that point. You know, everybody loved him. You know, there's only one question, but everybody loved the guy and, like, like – just the, the person, the makeup, the competitor. No one said anything. It was all positive. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.